Hello again, YouTube, and uh, welcome to everybody. Thank you again for everybody's comments. The uh, question and answer seem to go down quite well. People enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed video in it. Aiden, I had a, a right laugh doing that. But on this episode, what we're going to do is make a rear wheel drive sump for a ZTEC engine. Now these you can buy. They're quite expensive. But you can make them relatively cheaply. You just need a bit of 1.2 mil steel or, or thereabouts. So what I got is supposed to be 1.2, but it's actually 1.1, but I, I, that's good enough. Um, you can use smaller, but for a sump, you want something a bit thicker, and it's easier to weld, to get a nice non-porous weld, so, so the oil doesn't leak out of it, which is quite important. The uh, sump I'm going to make, you'll see the way I make it is in two parts. There's a base part, and then there's the actual sump, which is a winged part of it. Now, this can be done in such a way that the, sink, the winged part of it can either front, be front mounted or rear mounted. So if you're making a, got an early Cortina, you, you want to front mount it. And I think the early Anglias, the Anglias need front mounting as well. But for the Escort, you want the rear mounted. But it means you can move it back as a force to suit yourself. Uh, I've got a plan for it. You'll see I've put pictures up now of, of my drawings. I won't go into too much detail on how I made those drawings. It's quite simple. I just got the block and just drop around. Uh, measure up where, where I want to go but the, the joins are there for you so if you want to do this you don't have to go through that process the joins are there just take a screenshot print them off and away you go and what I'll do I'll presume you've done that if you want to make a sump yourself and go from that point onwards to make our ZTEC sump we've got a bit of steel here 1.1 mil or thereabouts uh, got our plans got tape measure got a square a sharpie and we can crack on. I'll start with the base piece first, so this will be the first plan. So we'll put this one to one side. Now the, the two edges of this is, is cut sort of roughly, but I know this edge is the machine edge, so we'll use that as a definite edge that we know is good and work from that down. And we'll call that our flywheel side, which is there, so flywheel. So our total length is 625mm, we use a tape measure for that, now what I like to do with tape measures, because I don't like the ends which are wobbly, I'll go from the 100 mark there, and just add 100 uh, as we're going, so, so we're looking, so 100, 100, 625, 725, 725 is there. Right, so that's that marked out ready for the basic shape. Then we'll start marking out the other side now. I'm going to use a plasma cutter to cut mine out because I have one but there's nothing stopping you using a jigsaw or whatever you're used to using for cutting your steel out but I, if 
when the plasma cutter is just quieter for a start. Um, I will be cutting this out with a jigsaw because it's, it's sort of a, a shape like this got to come into there and on the flywheel side as well. But we'll come back to that. First of all, let's just cut these out. Okay, I've cut off a bit there we shouldn't have, but I'll just simply weld that back on again. I should have cut around that like I've done here. Right, so there's our pieces cut out. Ignore that I cut that piece off there, I shouldn't have, but don't worry about that, we'll come back to that. You'll see a couple of little strips there as well. We'll see what we use those for as we go down. So what I'll do next is using the block, I'll explain now how to get the shapes we need for that to suit around that. I know to get the shapes we want for there, simply a case of messing on with some cardboard. So what I'll do first is cut off a piece of cardboard to suit that square there. Let's see if we just draw on that. Now that won't fit directly up against there because there's a bit of a, a bit of a nose off the crank to cut off. So what we'll do first you just hike a piece out of there like that, just to make space for that. Like so. So what we want now is for this card to be sitting on there and central. So we want to find a centre mark of that, which we can do simply by folding it. So that's our centre line. The centre line of our crank we can see is there that's pretty old, pretty clear to see where that is in fact you can see marks off of the off of that to, to help line us up and the center of the bear in there main cap so we'll that line up with our center mark there our bits of cardboard to make sure they're sitting on the face of the block and just draw around it Well, we'll cut that out. That will fit nicely onto there. So, what we do next then is simply draw that under there. And we'll use a jigsaw then to cut that out because it's easier. Now this side is a different size, different shape, so it's, uh, we've got to do it again. The same again, using cardboard, using our piece that we shouldn't have cut off. Make sure we're the uh, same size as a piece of cardboard. Same again, find our centre, simply by doing that. have to be at this stage super super accurate same again got to cut out for this bit of a nose piece there so we'll work that out we'll have a sit nicely on there same again eyeball where our center is for this so the center of the main cap is about there come across 
So that's not far off it. And same again, you can't see from this side because back in front of you. Exactly the same thing, just draw around it and cut it out. Same again, remember there. And we'll cut that out with the jigsaw. Right, as usual, standard bit, little bit on the jigsaw, work some feet for this. Right, this doesn't be quite so easy because I've got a very little hole to hang on to it with because I cut it off. Lovely. Now we've got those cut out, it's time to use our benders to bend these to shape. So we'll uh, make sure we're doing the right way around for a start. Should be good. Right, so that's our first two bends done. Now what we'll have to now what we'll have to do now is go to the um, block and mark these for drill holes, and there's something else we need to do to them. If you're doing this for an ST170 engine, which you don't need to do for a ZTEC engine. I'll show you what that is now. Right, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of with the ZTEC, which is quite annoying. So this is a bolt pattern for the sump. Now it fits there beautifully. I can get a, a bolt into each one of these, no problem. All the way along there, I get a bolt in there, no problem. On this side, however, they don't match up. The only two that do is that one and that one. So be aware of that when you're doing this, that the bolts is for some are not the same either side. So keep keep on track of which side you're doing. Now the nuts I use for these, these little uh, cap heads, there's your camera gun, the cap heads, eight mil cap head by 12mm length. Um, these are stainless, I ordered stainless by mistake, they don't have to be stainless, but be aware that it doesn't really matter with this application, but be aware stainless aren't as tough or sometimes a bit too tough and they break, so don't use it, don't use stainless for anything serious load. Right, now to get our bolt holes. Those of you who watch the channel regularly, remember I struggle with this sort of thing, so I made myself up a couple of these um, screw finders. So screw those in there, and we'll make our first hole up. I have to make sure I do this right around now. So that's my flywheel end, we just mark flywheel on it. So don't get lost. Front. So what we're looking for is for the edge of the wall of this to line up with the wall of the block there. The first thing you want to do is to make a line where that's going to be, going to our bolt holes. And scribe that down. There. Next thing I want is where my bolt hole is going to be starting with, which is going to be there somewhere. So 
So what I'll do is I'll knock out the, my first, I'll punch her out, drill her out, and then I'll start using it along the way to get my lines in the right place. Right, so I've turned the block around so you can see what I'm doing. So the starting from this side, which is the flywheel side, I drilled my first hole because I can eyeball where that's got to go. So I'll uh, drop that into place. Loosen. Work out where I'm going on this, backwards or forwards. I've got my, uh, my transfer screw in this side. And then we'll twink it down into place. Looking good. And then just tonk that onto the screw. Without moving it. Let me punch and it's in the center of me my draw line so that's good news so i'll drill that out now and then we should be in the right place eight mil drill bit what i'll do is ream these out to nine mil then now strictly speaking those should now line up beautifully, and they do. Lovely. So all I'm going to do now is continue with the transfer punch all the way along there until I get all the holes where I want them. Using these two then to keep me guided. this longer one to put in there to line us up and then the shorter one in there to get the punch and I use a longer screw in this side then to hold that in place but we're landing on a screw there and just do this all the way along now if I'd made more punch pins, I'd have uh, done this in one go, but I haven't. Lovely. Nice pin punches there now, just drill those out. And we should be in the right area. Don't worry about the swarf going into the engine. This is a scrap engine. I use it for, for mocking up. Right, so I've got a, a nine mil ream here now. So I'll ream these out to nine mil. Now this isn't entirely essential to use a ream. You could just use a nine mil drill bit. But this gives a nice perfect round hole. And this should, once cleaned up properly, line up on our holes beautifully. Which it does. So I could screw that down, which I will do just to show. There you go. So that fits there nicely. A little bit of give on it. We could round this down. Oh. What we're eventually going to do is turn this lip up by about five mil to give that a U bend, a U shape there to give that the strength to hold it in place. So that's basically what we're looking at for the side of the sump. Now, if I turn the block round, I'll explain what I was on about about the difference between the Z Tech and the ST one hundred and seventy. Now 
Now, if you're doing this for a Z-Tech, a silver top or a black top, this will be fine. But on the ST170, the big ends, see they, they're missing the side of the sump there, there, no problem on this one. Take yeah. Come on. Engine builders will be cringing when they see me doing this. So the the big end nuts there, uh, the um, the cap end nuts will miss that no problem. But the ST one seventy is a much chunkier engine. The bottom end is much chunkier. So what we need to do, so that they don't foul, is put a relief in along these. So it gives just a little space for that to go around on the block. Doesn't need a lot, but it needs a little bit there. So I'll show you now how to do that. Right, so that's where our centers of our journals are. So we'll just square that up a couple of inches on each one. So we want to put a form a bit of shape into that and all we're going to do is use our good old vice to do that with. So we'll crack that open a little bit. That'll be more than enough. I'm using an Bit of round bar like that, it doesn't have to be a tea thing like that, just a bit of round bar, or even a peen end of a hammer will do you. And a nice chunky hammer. So I'll line that up with the centre of our jaws. Support for it. And knock that in. Now it's a bit of a pain because it wants to deform the shape of this. So we've got to just straighten that out again after the event. That's all we want to do is knock that in. We could tighten that up a little bit. And what you want to do first, not knock it down, but knock it that way. So right on the corner, knocking it in. Like so. So you get that corner knocked out there. And then knock it up the two inch mark or thereabouts just faded out and then what that gives you is a nice relief for the uh, bearings to miss it now you'll see now hopefully that that's deformed that so we just have to hammer that back down after the event so i'll crack on now and put the rest of those in there and well, that's the basic idea, you just hammer form it over your vise so you make a relief for the big end nuts to go to. Just like so. There we got some nice reliefs bent into there. I don't quite quite like the look of those, they look kind of factory. What we're going to do now is sort out that wibbly wobbliness that's going on on there now. Now you'll see that is stayed straight and that's the importance of knocking this. I've learned this the hard way, got to knock it that angle first to get that cut out there first going because that squashes into there and then knock it down so if you just start off there and knock that down like that 
that will make all sorts of weird shapes out of the end there. So we just get a get a hammer and dolly on to tidy the ad up now, and then we'll work on to the other side. And that straightens up our wibbly wobbliness on there. And when we've come to turn our lip on this down here, that will straighten that up even further again. So doing the same thing now, I'll crack on and put the holes in and the release on the other side. Right, magic of editing, that's both sides now done. Now it's easier to do these now before we put these bends in because you can use it, it's easier to manhandle, that's why I'm doing them now. The next thing you want to do is bend this the other way, so we need to transfer our bend marks. So, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. One of them is put a, a um, little pib nib in that with a, uh, what you call it, a, a, a centre punch. Um, I just like, I'm just quite happy to draw, take the line round and draw it on. Nice. This side's pretty easy because it's where that would be. If I hadn't chopped this off by mistake, I'd know where to go because it'd be going to where the, that, that is there. Right, let's put these two bends on. Oh, you can see. This is starting to take a, a, a sort of shape to it. So the next bend is going to be bending this one up. But we need to just simply clamp something in there to hold that down. Something like that. We'll do this nicely because it sort of fits. Sharp edge on it. Right, nice big clamp to hold that in place. Bump that one up there, like so. You can now see we're starting to develop something which is sumpish. Take you to the engine now, and you'll see what I mean. Right then. So we have got something that will fit on like so <clears throat> and this piece then will simply weld onto that side but you know, you know the idea that that should have been like that and I should have been bending that down but hey ho mistakes happen. So what I'm going to do next is screw this down onto the block and then weld up these corners and you may at this point be wondering well, what about this bit here well, this is what these strips were for the idea of these is to simply hand form a shape to follow around there like so because it's a thin strip it's dead easy to work with And then that will weld onto there. And Bob's your uncle, we have a sump end, if that makes sense. So I'll uh, bolt this down first, and then we'll fiddle about with those and get things welded up. Now obviously you'll be thinking at this point, well, where's the rest of it? It should be a bit sticking out but what I've learned because I used to make these used to fold these up like this and make the sample and I was making life hard for myself so I, I learned to do it this way gives you options where your, your sump bowl is going to be and you just cut a hole like that for your for your um, pickup to come now if you are doing a Z-Tech again it's easier on a Z-Tech silver or black top because you can just use the existing pickup pipe you just need to lengthen it by about so much. I can't remember off the top of my head how much it is, but you just cut it 
lengthen it to stick through there and cut a hole that is appropriately sized. And that helps then in the future with oil surge because when you've got a hole there, if it does, because your bowl comes about here somewhere, as you're surging around, the oil is coming up against this. So I, as you look at this upside down, so the oil will be surging around in this bit, but it's going to struggle to get back up into the into there and surge out of this, this winged bowl part. And we're going to baffle it as well with the offcuts of, of steel, but we'll come back to that. So what the first thing I want to do is get this square with the engine and then weld it up and get this, get this bit done. Then we'll work on the next bit. gives us our very basic sump setup. All these welds I'll uh, clean up again afterwards but you get the basic idea so then we'll put our sump base into that next. Next thing then is to bend up these, this piece which will make the actual winged part of the sump. Well the, uh, the two outside parts of the bend, well this one at least I can bend on here as I bend that up, it's not going to get in the way, but if I try and bend this one up, we're going to get in the way of this, these pieces here. As, we, as we're bending up, it's going to curl it over, so we try and be a bit more inventive about how we can go about that. The first bend in there, the rest we're going to have to mess about with. Maybe if we bend these two up next, then we can get to that one after. finish that over by hand somehow. What I probably should do is cut two bits of angle to suit that, but I'm being too lazy. 
that's where the problem really is. <laughs> Ah, we're getting there now. Way up the bike crook. Oh, I feel I'm making this too hard for myself. All right, now we're getting some mess slowly. And this then folds into there, because uh, that's an access for something that I can't remember what it was. But it's, it's there for a reason. Now we're getting so yeah, so that will all link up like that. We'll, we'll get a tax on there. This is too long there, but we can uh, that might actually come to our favor. And then, of course, that bit there, once we've got welded and tacked in place, we just zip that off. See that we don't want that on there either, right? Down to the sump. So, the idea of this now is, is that it goes like so basically so weld that across there to make that one piece and then we have our sump itself before we do that we need to work out where our pickup is coming around there somewhere So that's our line for where the sump is. Let's take off the bits so you can see what we're doing. So there's our line for where the actual sump will be. And somewhere in there, sort of central, is where we're going to want our pickup to be. Right, let's get that off of there so we can cut that all up. Like I said, with you doing a front bowl pan, same thing there, just drop it into there. I think with the ST engine is sort of a front bowl pickup, so you probably could use the ST for that, for like a Cortina Zap, but I, I don't know for definite. And the beauty now of welding this into place as well, with it bolted down, that fits there very nicely now as well. And then they cut that out, we just use our jigsaw because it's easier to use it. Plasma cut is great for straight lines, we have a pain for circles. Use a jigsaw and a drill to make a, a starting point. Went off a little bit on, my on a tangent there, but it doesn't really matter. will fit through there you see so when it's on the on the engine eventually it'll sort of be sitting like that so we'll have oil pipe come across here or around there to avoid the <laughs> don't cross there because you'd be catching the pistons but around there to avoid the pistons and then drop it into the into the center there and when it's when it's in the center there somewhere We'll put a wall around it as well, so the oil, so it'll catch the oil slop. I'm not overly worried about making a super baffled with, with baffle flaps and what I've used which you have for race cars, but for a for a road car, simple baffles will be more than enough, even if it's just the uh, straight lines there, and there, with enough holes for the oil to get backwards and forwards, just to stop that sloshing about when you're cornering. Right, so the next step is to start rebuilding the sump itself and, and get the, the, the winged part of it welded to it now. So let's crack on with that. Alright, so that's the idea now, is to get this welded onto there. We'll start tacking 
and then uh, see where we end up. Right, now we're getting somewhere. So it's uh, fully welded, I think. I'll have to go around and double check everything. Of course, we'll uh, test everything. I am tempted to make up some sort of a jig to pressure test it. I, I'll have a think about how we can do that. But I'm quite happy with how the uh, welds are coming along. I'm pretty confident they're gonna be okay, but we'll know for definite when we, when we test it. So I'll whip it off now and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. It's still hot, so gloves on. There we go. One sump. Now, that's almost... Oh, get the gunk out of there. For road use, that'll be plenty good enough. Because the amount of slosh in there is going to get... It's not going to be able to slosh out of there because it'll be held in place by these this plate here. That's kind of the idea of it. But I still might put a bit of a couple of baffles in there just uh, anyway, just to be on the safe side. I've got plenty of offcuts to do that with. Okay, the next part of my cunning plan is to tip this up here. Now, I need something to back it up against. Now, I used to have a bit of box section to do this but I can't find it but nonetheless I don't think it'd be any good anyway because of these I've had to tip into here anyway bash into there anyway so you want a piece 20 mil thick to lay across there and have little leaves for these so that I can I can then bolt that down and turn these up against it 20 mil piece which will then give us the 5 mil Turn up. Okie dokie. So I'm going to use this bit of angle iron. Get the 20mm piece you want. And this is, I think, about 3mm probably. Yes. So that's about 3mm thick, which is going to be plenty enough for what we want. Zip off with a bit of that at 20. Right, so from my calipers, wind that out to 20. Or thereabouts. There you go. And right, okay, got this sort of cut length. So what you want to do now is make reliefs it to fit closer into there. There you go. I grind those out and then that'll fit tidy you into there. So there we go, that's them ground to clearance those. 
So what we'll do now is drill these out to suit our holes there. And if I move that down one, you can see where we need to centre up our holes to. Right, oh, so we want our holes to be along that line there, and that'll give us, you can see there now, about, about 5 mil, which we'll be tipping up to put strength into it. So just like I did with this, I first screw, first hole, or eyeball, and then drill that one out, then we'll work our way down to the others. Woohoo, I've got that one in place. Okay, got my first hole drilled in there. Get me transfer punches into there now and Right. Well, we should be able to bolt this down now in place. It's a right, let's move back this side first. So that should now bolt down like so. Lovely. All that means is where we can we can start tipping this up now to to suit right if i get a, a flat chisel as well so we can get underneath here to get these up So hopefully you can see what I'm achieving here now, putting a, a lip on this, which is giving that some more strength, quite, quite a lot more strength. see there now we've got an upturn on that which has put a nice bit of strength into that and flattened it out nicely as well so the next challenge is to spin the block around is to make our piece fit this side Okie doke, so that one and that one still fits, the other two, the other three, I'm going to have to mess about with to elongate them out, so I'll do that, clearance that, and then we'll do the same on this side. Right, I've got this clearanced, we can get this to bolt down on this side, we'll start off with the two bolts which do line up, and then... There we have our completed sump and pickup pipe. Flip the mover now so you can get a better idea of what we're looking at. You can see the, the tipped up flange here now to give that strength there. And there's our pickup pipe. So the next challenge is to build a rig to test it. <laughs> 